Welcome everyone to Motivation or Garbage, the soon-to-be viral hit show coming to you from the Impact Theory Studios in Los Angeles. I'm your host, Agent Smith, and this is the show in which two players face off as we plumb the depths of the human experience by looking at phenomena around the world and asking one big important question. Motivation or garbage? Nice. <laughs> Why do we do this? Because we have nothing better to do and because we have, we and over 18 million other people on Facebook were inspired by a little clip called Motivation is Garbage, which was taken from an episode of Impact Theory recorded in this very studio. And if you've seen that video, you'll certainly remember our contestants, so let's meet them now. Contestant number one inspires and educates large audiences the world over as a speaker, writer, and commentator. She's the author of the books The Five Second Rule and Stop Saying You're Fine, a contributing editor for Success Magazine, an Impact Theory alum, a footwear fashionista. Ladies and gentlemen, please nice. give a warm welcome for Mel, Don't Call Me Motivational, Robin. Woo! Yeah. Yes, you're going down! Wow, that escalated quickly. <laughs> Contestant number two is a serial <laughs> entrepreneur, the co-founder of Quest Nutrition, and the former king of remedial jobs. Nice. He's a self-described brain fanatic who hates working out even though he does it religiously. Ladies and gentlemen, the man who used to stand outside of Cheesecake Factory on Saturday <laughs> mornings waiting for it to open, the white rabbit himself and your host of Impact Theory, Tacoma's finest, Mr. Tom Bilyeu. Yeah. <laughs> That was amazing. That was the best intro I've ever heard. That was pretty good. All right, one quick announcement. The tortoise Mel. beats the hair, though, so White uh, Rabbit, you uh, better watch okay, out because okay. the turtle's coming All right, up. easy contestants. <laughs> Mel will be doing a live cast with Success Magazine from this studio in just a few hours, so be sure to check it out. She's going to show you how to build the life of your design and use the tools of confidence, courage, and clarity to make it happen. Tune in at 5 p.m. Pacific Daylight Time. Go to success.com forward slash impact. We'll drop the link in the comments. All right, here's how to play the game. It's very simple. I'll present a topic, and each contestant will hold up a card showing motivation or garbage. Then each player will follow up explaining their responses. Now, for those of you watching at home, you too can play along by sharing your answers to each question in the comments. Nice. We'll be giving away prizes along the way. Plus, if you write in your own topic that you want the contestants to respond to, put it in the comments, and the one with the most likes by the end of the show will be chosen for the final question and you will win our grand prize, featuring 25 books from Tom's reading list, plus a signed copy of Mel's smash book, wow. The Five Second Rule, two Impact Theory t-shirts, one for you and your boo, a 15-minute call with Tom Bilyeu, and a one-year Audible subscription, so you can level up your life. So, get those creative juices flowing and start submitting your topics now. Are the contestants ready? I want to know what I win when I beat Tom. Well, we'll, yeah, we'll have a great prize ready for you. This is not play. All right, then. All right. All right let's get started be. with our first topic. Dwayne The Rock Johnson. All right, contestants, get your, get your cards ready. Do I, how do we do this? And on three, reveal your answer. Motivation. All right. We'll start with contestant number one, Mel Robbins. Why is The Rock motivating to you? Um, well... If I have my facts straight, which is questionable, <laughs> um, uh, he was once homeless. And he came from literally the bottom in terms of hitting rock bottom and clawed his way out and followed his passion. And I also love the fact that the Fast and Furious movie franchise was something that everybody kind of snubbed their nose at and laughed at. And now they're laughing all the way to the bank by following their intuition. And I also love the fact that he's said, even though Tom doesn't want to talk politics, he did float an idea out there that he might just run for president. Go rock, motivation. All right, we love it, motivating. Tom, what do you think? Um, to me, anybody that can do what he's done to his physique is utterly astonishing. That kind of physical transformation comes with a mental transformation, so my boy For Swayze gets Motivation. All right. Two motivations for The Rock. Let's go to our and next. And by the way, if he runs for president, I'll vote. No Ooh. question. There we have it. There, there we go. Is. Let's go for the next topic. And it is the concept of no days off. All right, contestants. Get your responses ready. All right. And Tom, let's start with you on this one. He's giving a motivation. Yeah. Is it true that you need days off? Yes, occasionally. Um, but to make it something that you celebrate, I think is a mistake. I think people should be going literally as hard as they can. Trust yourself. If you're screaming for a day off, take one. 
Um, but as like a standing thing, I think it's okay not to. All right. And it, it's inspiring, in fact. All right. Mel, what do I you think, think it's insanity. The science is against it, and it's complete and utter garbage. Uh, I was just with Brandon Burchard, and the guy said on stage that he takes 17 weeks off a year, and it was the first time in a while that I've been really jealous of a dude. And I thought, there is something wrong here, because I have been working too hard, I'm running two companies, and, and, and I'm... I got three, my husband and I have three kids. And, and, you know, one of the things that has really struck me as an entrepreneur is that without the downtime, without the ability to take a day off from the grind, the push, the stress, the move, the push, the build, the drive, you do not have the ability to reset your brain. You don't have the ability to do the productive kind of procrastination on ideas that you're noodling. And so I think it's really critical for your success to be intentional, intentional about taking time off, whatever that means for you. I've actually wiped out the whole summer. I'm doing four speeches this summer, that's it, because I haven't had the ability to focus on creative projects because I have no time off. So I think it's complete garbage, complete. All right, there you go. Difference of opinion. All right, let's move on to our third topic, money. Contestants, get your responses ready. And what do we got? Two motivating answers. <laughs> yeah. Let's start with Mel. Um, you know, I'm just really motivated by money. Not, not that that's the number one driver, but it's a, such a fun game. And it's, to me, I, I just have a lot of fun making a lot of money. However, all of the research shows that most of us are not intrinsically motivated by money. That's really not the reason why I do what I do. I do what I do because I love um, connecting with people. I love the moment that people have an awakening. But the idea that I can make money, lots of money, doing the things that I love and provide for my family, that is so motivating to me. But if I hated what I was doing, money alone wouldn't be a motivator. But yes, very motivating. That's a great answer. Tom, what do you think? Um, I pretty famously chased money for a long time only to come up emotionally empty. So I can say, having been on both sides of the equation, that people will forever chase money because money is real. Once you understand what you want to do with the money, it's no longer just an inert lump of cash, which can do about one thing, and that's release heat energy, which if you light it on fire, will keep you nice and warm. Um, but really, truly, the things that the grandest things that we're going to do as a society or even as an individual are going to need resources. So you're either going to be asking for them from somebody else or you're going to be accumulating those resources yourself. But at the end of the day, you need that. And if you've read the book, The Rational Optimist by Matt Ridley, he talks about specialization and how basically society is ever going to move forward towards specializing. And once you specialize, you need some sort of economic vehicle to make that happen. Uh, we're not trading seashells. The thing that we've decided to trade is money. Um, so there is tremendous, tremendous power to money because of its ability to facilitate. So I think when people lament the emptiness of money, it's because they don't know what they're trying to do with it. I'm shocked that you said this. Really? Well, I'm shocked because I've heard you say that, that you, I, I can't remember the exact sentence that you say, but I've, I've seen you say it online. I've seen you say it on a stage. And it, has, it was something about the fact that, that money isn't what's important to you. And so I find it really interesting. Maybe it was when, I, I don't remember the, the exact part of the story, but I, I'm very surprised to hear you say that it's motivation. I expected you to say it's complete and utter garbage, because I also know you're the kind of guy that is truly following your heart and throwing your hat over the ring. So anyway, just got to throw that out there. Yeah. Love it. Let's move on to our fourth How are we scoring topic. this, by the way? It, the points are <laughs> made up. The rules don't matter. Nice. So, yeah. There we have okay. it. Okay. <laughs> we got some applause Welcome, everyone. Okay. All right. Number four, millennials. Millennials. Okay. Give you a second to think about it. And answers? All right. Uh-oh. We have a split decision here. Well, let's start with Tom, and then we'll get to you, Mel. Um, I, 
at the end of the day, it's a large group of people. And anytime you're getting a large group of people together, you can count me in. There's going to be an endless number of fascinating people. Um, I don't like I am of the Goggins philosophy of toughen the fuck up, buttercup like that. At the end of the day, like that's Goggins. where I'm at. What is that from? What is oh Goggins? My. Goggins. Goggins. <laughs> what is that? I don't know what that is. What so, is Goggins? Goggins uh, I'll was, allow a brief tangent here. Nice. Goggins was our most recent episode of Impact Theory. He just dropped yesterday, in fact, today. Today. See, um, now I have. I was on a plane, so I'm sorry. They you, didn't have total, it. Sorry, totally okay. get a pass. But he's a Navy SEAL. He's from the book Living with a SEAL. He is unbelievable. This guy is, is literally like my hero. I want to be this guy when I grow up. He's absolutely Please don't, because we need you, Tom. We need you to if, be you. If, if I could be Goggins at least briefly, that would be deeply emotionally satisfying. So anyway, he is... He, is looking for people to really step up and toughen up. And I think I'm a huge, huge, huge proponent of that. Having said that, like having worked with as millenni many millennials as I have, like anything, there's just an incredible number of awesome people in there. So um, yeah, as, as any huge swath of people get, my thumbs up. Um, well, I kind of had a split decision because on one hand, there are aspects to the way that millennials get typecast that I find really exciting as an entrepreneur. And, you know, the ability to really figure things out, professional Googlers, super tech savvy, uh, in, in, a, in a good way, being self-driven and, and understanding the importance that an individual uh, can make and, and an opinion that you can have. And that's something that a lot of generations, it wasn't instilled in us because we were not uh, raised with social media. And so at the age of 18, I didn't have a platform to broadcast myself unless I was standing on a table drunk at Dartmouth screaming, you know, something like that, or arguing with my mother at the kitchen table. So there's a there's psychological shift that I really love. The reason why I said garbage, though, is because I'm torn. Because I think whenever you take a large group of people, like Tom was saying, and you typecast them, and now you got all these people going out into the workforce saying, oh, I'm going to tell you how to talk to millennials. And, and I think human beings at the end of the day are human beings. And maybe some of the characteristics that, that millennials get trashed for, whether it's the self-centeredness or the inability to be managed or thinking you're going to be CEO the second you graduate from college, those things tend to get magnified as general, general lallet. Is that even a word? You know, what I mean. thank you. Um, and so I hate that aspect because what we're seeing in millennials is that they've just given themselves permission to really bring the things that we all want, which is recognition and feeling a sense of importance and wanting to make a contribution. They have the, they, they've been raised in a environment where that has been brought to the surface. And for your elders, like, myself, I'm not going to necessarily link, yank you into this because you look like you're 30, but we were, I was not raised that way. And so it was a learned skill. So I don't like typecasting everybody, but there are attributes that millennials have that I love. So I don't know. Now you know what it's like to be almost 50 and menopausal. Completely confusing. <laughs> All right. Great I answer. I never know what it's like to be menopausal, but you know, I appreciate that. <laughs> All right, let's move on to our next topic. For this one, we're going to be giving away a copy of the Five Second Rule Mel Robbins book. So if you participate and put your answer in the comments, we will choose a winner at the end. So, contestants, Drum your roll. answers. And? Oh, is that the, that's the yeah, thing? This is the top. Oh, it's totally, garbage, it's, it's garbage, man. <laughs> this was a complete gimmick that I created in order to try to, to get rich because I'm motivated by money. Smart. That's what that was. All it's right. Good. It's a good strategy. How'd it work? <laughs> um, it's been fantastic, actually. It's been really incredible. Not, I mean, just because of the difference that it's making for mm. people. It's been beyond my wildest dreams, frankly. Really cool. Excellent. Tom, what do you think? I'll be really honest. When I first heard the idea, I didn't think it was like a get rich quick scheme, but it did seem too easy. And I was like, oh God, like when they were pitching you, I was like, is it really like enough meat on that bone? The response that we've gotten from people who are like, this has changed my life. It, it's just undeniable. Like people can say whatever they want, but we alone have had hundreds and hundreds of comments of people saying like this changed my life. It's this a, it's crazy. Impetus. You know the thing, the, the, and that was a joke, obviously, what I was saying. But so the hardest thing for me, because like you, I'm so interested in science, and as much as I joke around, I'm also a nerdy kind of serious person. 
So when I came up with a concept that's so stupid sounding, it was a little weird to talk about it because I'm basically saying you can change your life in five seconds. No, really. And no, it's not the same as just do it. It's actually a tool and there's science behind it. And so it, it's on its face. It sounds like the dumbest concept in the world, but when you get somebody to try it and they instantly start breaking the habit of procrastination, mm. it's just like motivation or anything. You're on a fast right now. And so you could tell somebody go on the, is it keto? Is that how you say that? Keto? 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 Is that how you say it? Keto, yeah, keto diet. Yes, I don't know mm -hmm. what the keto diet is, but I know that you're on it right now, and I saw that you were eating some sort of uh, the how do you say that shaved lamb stuff that you're eating that was you're not uh, that was technically a cheat, by the way. I didn't eat. You well, didn't eat that. So that was going into the 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 fasting period. So during a fast, it's water only. But you're so you're on water only. Water only. I better win because you you're basically days. delusional at the moment, yeah. right? So um, when when you give somebody. A, a formula to follow, even if it sounds simple, like, yeah, go on a fast, it'll cleanse your body, you'll be like, yeah, that sounds whatever. You actually implement something that sounds simple, mm. you realize that, holy cow, these simple concepts work. They really do. We overcomplicate everything. Meditation, another, another practice that you have, that you're mm. adamant about, it's really simple. Most people don't do it, but it really, works. And I think that some of the most powerful things in life are the simplest things. I mean, I think we all know that if we were just a little bit more kind to people, particularly our spouses, your marriage would be better. I think we know that it, the more you cheer for people, you, you 100%, like that's the only management philosophy you need. Cheer for people. That's it. Assume good attention. That's all you need to know. And if you put that simple idea into practice, yeah, lots of Harvard scientists will write about why and there'll be bestsellers that are written about it, but it, it does come down to the smallest stuff that we don't do. And so this is one of these ideas that making five second decisions, I think we all know we overthink and I think we all know that we have these moments of intense wisdom and yet within five seconds flat, our minds talk us out of it. And so I'm trying, I'm desperately trying to teach as many people as possible that every single change comes down to a five second decision and that you can change everything and that as resigned as you are or as defeated as you are or as tired as you are, the answer really is do what you say you're gonna do. If your wisdom speaks and you start to talk just five, four, three, two, one and push yourself, if you can find power in that tiny moment, you will win every single time and slowly your life will start to change. Nice. Well yeah. said. There it is. There it is. <laughs> well earned applause. I Go think. check out the book. And do we have a winner we from the comments? Anyone? Judges? We do have a winner. That would be Sandra Says Dugan. Sandra, awesome. I'll sign that book for you, Sandra. You've won a copy of the five second rule. Congratulations. Let's keep it going here. Oh my God, we got more? We got more. Awesome. We have more. Number six. Kicks. Oh, nice. and I did not wear mine today. All right, contestants, shot. what do we got here? What are our oh. answers? Motivation. We're two alike. Tom, <laughs> tell us about kicks. To me, it's you know a nice, simple question of personal expression, and uh, you, I, I actually really get into collecting, which is probably bad, but from comic books to kicks, like I really enjoy that process. So yeah, finding uh, some cool kicks and having something to set your sights on and go for it. You, you it. know, it's, it's motivating to me, and you know, both Tom and I share an affinity for shoes. We have different tastes in shoes. I haven't seen you in glitter ones yet, but you have yet. worn some, some with spikes. You have worn some with spikes. Um, what's interesting as a woman <coughs> is that when you take ownership over kind of how you want to present yourself, that is motivating and powerful, and you demonstrate something. And one of the interesting thing is things about... Um, just the fact that I tend to wear a lot of high tops on stage, nine times out of 10, nine times out of 10, when somebody says something nasty, it's usually somebody complaining about the sneakers. Really? Yes, that a woman shouldn't dress like that. And so yeah. I find it very motivating to make personal choices about how you wanna present yourself so that it demonstrates who you are. And for me, that's about authenticity, approachability, a sense of fun and you know that kind of thing and so a surprise and so that um it, it's really interesting it never fails 
never fails at all. I'm shocked by that. It's great. All right, let's move on to our next woman. Okay, none of the none of the women here are shocked by that. Yes. It's madness. Let's move on to our next topic. Suffering and pain. With By the way, that's David the image Goggins. Image of David Goggins. All right. Really? A legend. How old is he? Goggins. Uh, I'm going to guess mid 40s. Sounds about wow. right. All right, Maybe contestants, what do we got here? Suffering and pain, motivating or garbage? I don't know where the strong camera response is. from Tom Billio. Huge. I think I have to just go and like not do the same as you. All right, Mel. We have him. Let's garbage. let's let's have you start it off. Why is suffering and pain garbage? Um because we spend too much time there. Too many of us have a habit of dwelling uh, in self-inflicted suffering. And it is garbage. You don't have to. All right. Great. Tom, what do you think? I think that you only meet yourself in suffering. And while I understand what you're saying about the way that people get themselves in a twist mentally, and that's super counterproductive, um, I think we spend our entire lives moving away from suffering. And once you're able to put yourself into self-inflicted suffering, like a fast, um, you really, or working out or running, doing a fucking marathon, like whatever it is, like in those moments, you really realize who you are and you realize how close your boundaries and your limitations and where you tap out are. Like, I can't tell you the number of people that like started the fast until they got hungry. And then they're like, you know, back channeling, DMing me, like, what do I do to actually get to the other side? And the answer is, not tolerate that shit from yourself. Like literally not tolerate it. And that's the answer. To have a hard, fast, bright line about who you are, what you're willing to tolerate from yourself. But you don't know that's easy to say until you have to put it to the test. And then it's like, who are you really? That's suffering, baby. There we well, see, I think there's a difference. Oh, that, see, you're on the rebuttal. Goggins high right now. Plus, you haven't eaten in two days. Am I so. not like this all the time, though? Like this? You this are pretty like intense. That is true. Is that is true. Thing. But but so there. But see, I think you're talking about s intentional suffering versus the unintentional self-imposed. Well, suffering. now let's. Ooh, uh, yes, if you want to get really complicated. Let's take when you were obese. Okay. So what category was that in? Well, so now, like, oh, God, I'd never call myself truly obese because I think that's unfair to make it seem like I've clawed my way back from that deficit. Many, many people have struggled way How more than me. How heavy were you? We'll decide if you were obese. Okay, maybe not. Yeah. You're kind of no, tall. I've, trust me, I've seen obese. And um, sadly, it is almost sad for me that I've never been obese. Just so that what? I could prove to my... To, so I could that prove is to the myself, clip that will go viral right well, there. Well, no, you're ready for the clip that's going to go viral. <laughs> I wish me. that I'd been addicted to heroin. Because then people would see, like, if, if it wasn't super dangerous and really stupid, I would get addicted to heroin just so I could get back off of it. You heard right her here now? first. Like, you would actually try heroin. If it wasn't insanely stupid, yes. But I recognize how stupid that is, which is why I'm not going to do it. But in terms, really? of, in terms of giving yourself something like a fast, something to prove your level of discipline, yeah, it would be pretty amazing. It would be stupid. I'm not going to do it. Don't panic. So like, this I'm well reminds aware of me that. of like a David but Blaine, yeah. is that his name, moment? Yes. And what do you, you know, think? You know, like, a, like, okay, a, like, a, like Blaine, an extreme stunt thing. Motivation or garbage? Oh, David total Blaine. motivation. 100%, right? Yes, because like, the guy is like coming up with these problems to solve. Like, could I possibly be submerged in ice for 25 hours and still yes, survive? That's unbelievable. That, I, I don't, your, your, your wife's going to come running in here in a minute and shut this down if I keep pushing the heroin thing. But seriously, like, do you think that if you, you think that you could beat an addiction like that? Yes, of course. Really? Of course. You're, it's been done, right? So other people have That's beat true. it. That's true. That's would, true. But I'm just wise enough to recognize how stupid that would be and the, the devastating physical, emotional, and lifestyle effects that it would have. So would I ever really do it? No, of course not, because that would be fucking absurd. But could I do it? Yes, of course. See, I and don't think I could do it. I, I guess the reason why is because I, maybe I could. I, I, um, I've met too many people that are struggling with the opioid addiction that turned into a heroin addiction and have read too many studies about the fact that those drugs completely change your neural pathways. And so you're haunted for the rest of your life with that trigger. So it would be a lifetime of self-discipline. I mean, I have a hard enough time 
truly walking past the booze between five and eight o'clock at night when I say to myself, I'm not going to drink tonight. And I don't drink, but it is a haunting for three hours straight. And so to sign up for a lifetime where I would be like that 24 hours, oh my God. I think I could do it, but I wouldn't want to try. That's an interesting question. You're the kind of guy that I could see doing something like that. Like being that, I'm not saying that you should, but I, 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 I really, like you're the kind of guy that is, you, you want to inspire people and you want to teach people. And unfortunately in today's world, most people only pay attention when it's extreme. Here's the great news. Tell me. That doesn't hold interest for me. I would never <laughs> do this for anyone else, ever, under any circumstance. Like that would really be retarded. So do I like that the things that I've learned are useful to other people? Yes, but I don't consider myself a teacher. You don't? Nope. Connected to mobile device. What does that What's mean? Some technical difficulties. Bear with us, folks. <laughs> oh, that's all right. I thought we were having a call-in show all of a sudden. I'm like, we're back to our radio days. Come on, let's go. That's yeah. going to be the next thing, is to let people call into these live that streams. That would be... That's an interesting, that just, sorry, I've never, that's an interesting question. Well, I bet somebody's done it. I bet somebody has gotten addicted to some type of drug in order to, to show people that, that you can get off it. Be crazy, but impressive. It would be totally crazy. Well, I think that leads into our next topic, which is an interesting one. Psychedelics. Oh. Oh. Motivating or garbage? All right. Um. We have Tom's response, Mel. I'm not sure. <laughs> well. I don't really like them. Okay. Two garbage responses. We'll start with Tom since he was very I, I don't have the courage to find out if it's motivating. So that's the truth. Because I've never done it, I don't feel I have the right to say that it's motivating. It might be amazing. It might be transformative, life-altering, um, but I'm too big of a chicken to find out. So. Right. so he's definitely not doing heroin, in other words. If you can't take shrooms, then you definitely yeah. are not doing no, heroin. No, let, let there be maximum clarity. I'm never actually going to get addicted to heroin. Because you don't like to lose control. See, the uh, thing about psychedelics is that that's for somebody that wants an experience where they want to go out of control. I'm not worried about losing control. That's not what freaks me out. What freaks me out is permanent brain damage. 100%. I'm so brain protective. I'm never going to head a soccer ball. I'm never going to do a kickboxing match. Like anything that has potential brain trauma at the end of it, nope. Why? Because it's, there's two things that once they happen, I can't retrograde. The loss of my wife and brain damage. You can take money, uh, lose a business, all of that, whatever. It doesn't matter. You can build your way back. Brain damage, that's it. Done. Yeah, that's true. I remember when my dad had... Um my dad, they found a, uh, uh, what's it called, an, an aneurysm that hadn't blown up yet. Oof. And they found it just ancillary. He had collapsed on a golf course. He thought he had vertigo. They did one of these scans, and they're like, oh, no vertigo. But guess what? You have an aneurysm, and we got to take it out. Wow. And I remember asking him, because he's a doc. He said, um, Is it, this was one of these five-second moments. I, I called him, or he called me to tell me that this whole thing was going down. And um, I remember being on the phone with him, and he was explaining that he was going to go have surgery at the University of Michigan, and they were going to cut his head open and pull off the top and do all this stuff to try to get to this aneurysm. And I, and I had this feeling rise up where I thought, I wonder if he's scared. And then I immediately, my mind started saying, don't get him upset. Like, you don't want that thing to blow. Like, don't be the reason. Don't ask him a question that... And that's immediately what I thought. Like, you, you could make this aneurysm rupture if you get him upset. And I went, you know what? Five, four, three, two, one. I said, Dad, are you, are you scared? And he said, you know, Mel, he said, I, I, uh, I've had a really incredible life. He said, I, I grew up. I got to do what I never thought I'd do. I became a doctor. I married your mom. We've, we've been together for 50 years. You and your brother turned out. He said, I've really gotten to do what I've wanted to do with my life. And he said, the only thing that you could ever ask for is more time. And he said, you know, watching my dad have a stroke and see him so debilitated and then caring for our best friend Susie who died of ALS, he said, I would never, ever want to live in that state. And so, am I scared? No. He said, I'm really lucky. I'm lucky that we found it. I'm lucky that we have a chance to fix it. And I'm lucky that something didn't happen that completely debilitated me. I'll tell you, it was one of the most intimate conversations I had ever had with my father. I almost didn't ask the question wow. because I was afraid of upsetting him. I was afraid of the intimacy as so many of us are. 
of asking like the scary questions, of upsetting somebody. And um, I learned a lot about him. And that's exactly what his fear was, the same as yours. And the surgery went fine and he's doing great. But um, yeah, I think it's important to know who you are and what you want. No question. Lovely response. Would you like to <laughs> expand on anything? With well, unlike Tom, or? I've experimented. I'm not going to give you the long laundry list, but um, I didn't like them. Like at the end of the day, um, through all the, the experimenting, I really at the end of the day don't like feeling out of control. And so that the wave that hits you if you take a psychedelic drug, that would create a majorly stressful, unhappy situation for me at this moment. So I think they're complete garbage. But for those of you that love to be completely out of control and out of your mind, they're probably very motivating. There you go. All there right. you go. For our next topic, we're going to be giving away another prize. <laughs> All right. The motivation is garbage clip. What is that? You've probably seen. We're going to give away this shirt, our do shirt in That's the Impact so Theory cool. store. Because if you've seen the clip, you know motivation is garbage and you just need to take action. So let's hear from our contestants. <laughs> Both? There it is. There it is. There it is. <laughs> no, no, no. Nice and easy. Tom, we'll start with you. Um, is motivation garbage? <sighs> no. I get how it's meant and it winds me up to no end. In fact, where's my A camera? Will somebody, are you my A camera? All right. <laughs> Let me, let me just say this right now. If you have any intention of going to that clip and leaving a comment about how you're actually motivated and this woman is dumb because she's saying motivation is garbage, that is to totally look at the world from how can I shut things off? How can I close my mind? How can I not be open to a piece of information? Because the clip is amazing. It's resonated with a lot of people. Motivation will let you down at the most inopportune moments. And so to not look past like just the binary statement of motivation is garbage, which obviously she's saying to make a point, to get people's attention, to not look past that to the message that she's trying to convey, it winds me up when I get those comments. I want to just like crawl through the computer screen. You do? Oh, I laugh. Yeah. Uh, just... I laugh because you're a sucker. You fell for a headline. And you know what else we know? I know anyways, you probably didn't even watch the clip. You just sound it off in the comments. And if you're somebody that does that, you are robbing yourself because you're not actually trying to learn anything. The point of that clip is to make you understand that the major mistake that everybody makes is waiting. Waiting to fucking feel like it. Waiting for somebody to pick you. Waiting for the right time. Waiting for you to feel motivated. It's not coming. For the big stuff, for the hard stuff, it requires a push, always has, always will. Nobody is coming to save your ass. It is up to you. And so if you want to change anything about your life, stop sitting around and wasting your goddamn life and start pushing yourself. Whether it's a fast or it is starting a business or it is changing how you talk to your spouse or it's changing the kind of parent that you are, you got one life. And all you need to do is turn on the freaking news and see the kind of shit that's going on in this world. It's both amazing and terrifying. You never know when your time is up. But I do know that you've got time right now to change things. And so the thing you should change is you should take 100% responsibility for your future. You should decide what is it that you really want your life to look like because you only get one of them and it's not going to start again. But you could start building your future right now. And that begins the moment that you realize that you're never going to feel like doing the things that are hard. You're never going to feel like stepping out of your comfort zone. And the second that you do, the second that you push through, you win. You win because you see yourself becoming the kind of person who takes action. You see yourself believing in your ideas. You see yourself disregarding your own excuses. That is the source of confidence. It's the willingness to try. It doesn't start with belief. It starts with the push. So do yourself a freaking favor and stop thinking about all this stuff and stop commenting and push yourself. Do something. Who's going to win the shirt? I think, uh, well, I guess the Who shirt is going pick. to win the there shirt. It is. We have a winner, Amy, Amy B. B. on Facebook. You just won yourself a do shirt. Booyah. And dear audience, aren't you glad you tuned in today? Because this is some powerful stuff. All right. Now, let's get a time check from our judges. Can we keep going? We have several more topics. Awesome. All right. Okay. Let's nice. keep going. Next topic. Artificial intelligence. 
Where's the one that says terrifying? <laughs> I'm going to do this one because it right, scares Mel, we'll start the with hell you. out of me. Uh, so artificial intelligence is obviously... So there's this incredible TED Talk. I'm sure you've already seen it about the biologist from Harvard who talks... He, it's a, it, he, he just gave a talk in Vancouver where he wrote a, a letter to a young scientist. And it's all the things that he wants scientists to understand. And one of the things that he talks about in this particular TED Talk is the fact that the pace of technology is, and you talk about this all the time, is, is eclipsing our ability to keep up with it. That we cannot right now even predict what the technology will be like 10 years from now. Artificial intelligence is going to be the thing that changes the next 10 years of our lives. When, I, when you think about just the technology of talking to Siri or the augmented reality of, of what they just released on Instagram or what they've had on Snapchat, or you think about the learning intelligence of, of these apps that we have that start to serve up things to you, this is only going to get exponentially more significant in terms of your day-to-day -day life. That's going to have profound changes for jobs, yeah. for how people behave, for what's required of you, how much you're relying on machines. And so, you know, it scares me because I don't know what's coming and I don't know. I mean, I know Elon Musk is worried enough about it that he's starting to dig into the ethics behind it, but it's exciting because it makes life easier. And it's exciting because it will help doctors diagnose you because artificial intelligence and can crunch 50,000 records at once and then using predictive modeling and the Watson technology to IBM help with the diagnosing of your particular cancer, which is amazing. But there are implications that I can't even wrap my brain around in terms of humanity and ethics and that scares the hell out of me. Fair enough. I think a lot of people live there. I think a lot of people, if they can't understand it, then there's um, an automatic bias to the negative. That people to, I mean, just think about it from an algorithmic perspective as a human being to make sure that that thing rustling in the bush uh, isn't a lion instead of someone that you love and care about very much, we immediately go to negative assumptions. But um, for anybody who's read Michio Kaku's book on basically um, what the future looks like, and he talks about the different classifications of societies, and I forget, it's like a level five society can harness the power of a star. Um, that's where it starts to get interesting. And I'm telling people, look beyond like, Yes, it's going to cure illnesses. Yes, it's going to do a lot of amazing things. Yes, it's going to change jobs. But it's like, look beyond that to when, as a species, we're able to fully transcend biology, live forever. Oh, my God. Yes, it's going to be... Is that something you want to do? Do you want to live hundred percent. You do? Anybody who says that they don't want to live don't. forever... I don't. That's total... I don't. That's crazy talk because all you've ever known is life. Well, I'm also going to be trapped. Like, by the time they figure that out, I'm going to be 80. So I'm going to be in the diaper. And, like, everybody else is going to be at a party oh, for a friend. lifetime. friend, let, let, me, let me enlighten you to the future that's coming. So, first of all, every year that you live, your life is going to be getting better. So Let me just say one thing. 80, You're talking to a person that can hardly believe that a Ford Focus can self-park. I see these commercials. So, like, where you are going with all of this? <laughs> yes. Okay, so tell me what's coming. Yeah, so every year it's going to get a little bit better. So by the time you're... I mean, you're talking what does better mean? Over Meaning like years. the Botox is better, so I don't wrinkle. You won't even have to think about Botox because first of all, with a skin gun, you'd literally be able to do a skin facial gun. peel. It can determine how deep to go because each layer of the skin does different things and they'll be able to 3D print the skin on you. This stuff is amazing. Ew. The world is only going to get better, my friends. Technology is a one-way street towards hope and prosperity. So if I can just balance people so out So what we know is you're going to go in right. and, and into like some sort of tube and step out as... Gagan, Gagan, Gagan. Goggin. Goggin, Goggin, Goggin. Yeah. Whatever the hell his name is. <laughs> yes. <coughs> Not quite, but I like where you're It'll be like at. Freaky Friday, only, you know, with you and Gagan. <coughs> Goggin. <coughs> I am hopefully not. I think it's time to move on to our next topic. <laughs> All right, yeah, I this could one's go. going off the rails. All right, next crazy, topic. Yeah. Whoa! Oh, sex. I didn't see that coming. This is not a family show, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> yeah. All right, Mel, we'll start with you. It's amazing. It gets better, especially uh, it gets better. <laughs> I, well, having been married, now I'm having a hot flash. Having been married for 20 years, one would think that it would suck to only have sex with one person for the rest of your life, but it's actually pretty incredible. And it gets better all the time. 
All right. Great answer, Tom. And I'll it's just... work. It's not natural to be monogamous. You got to want it. You got to be committed to it. You got to like be intentional about it. But it, it's amazing. Great. Nice. Um, I'll just take it from a neurochemistry standpoint. It is amazing. It, uh, the, the rush from vasopressin, which makes you feel connected and pair bonding and trust and all of that wonderful stuff to just the, the physical sensation, which is utterly astonishing. So it is nature's greatest high. You should try it on psychedelics. <laughs> I don't know. I've been told it's not that great, but I'm just kidding. That's all right. So... Hey, you guys pick the topic. Next keep topic. Going. I love it. Next topic. Haters. I was told the only thing we wouldn't talk is politics. Okay. <laughs> haters. What do we got? Tom, why are haters mm. motivating? Um, it's my 80-20 rule. So 80% of the time you should spend it in looking at the things that are beautiful, the people that support you, all that good stuff. But 20% of the time, knowing that people out there want you to fail is actually incredibly mm. potent. For me, like the moments where it's hardest, the moments where I'm in real pain, those are the times where only the darkness will do. And focusing on the beautiful things that I'm trying to create is just not enough for me. At those moments, I really do need to know that somebody wants me to fail. They want to drag me down so that I can push back against it. All right. Mel, what do you um, think? Well, I find haters really motivating. And I put them in a couple categories. I put, like, there's a whole, especially when, when you're in a kind of a public job, whether you're on television or you put stuff out online, there's a lot of trolls out there. So there's a lot of nasty people that are probably living in their parents' basement that have nothing better to do than just sling garbage online. So those folks I don't find <coughs> motivating, I find them kind of sad. But okay. the true haters, the people that engage you intellectually, that don't like your ideas, that you say something and it triggers something, I find that so motivating because if you trigger somebody else there's a kernel of truth to what you said. Because most of us don't care about the things that, that don't matter to us. You know, you could call me a lousy parent and I would be nonplussed at all because I don't believe that. But if you, you know, I, I don't even know what you could say that would rattle me at this point. But um, if you, it, when, when you have somebody that really engages you with your ideas, it shows me and is very motivating because I'm reaching people. I've got ideas that are provocative. You don't want to just listen to people that say the same old shit that you believe. Otherwise, you're not going to grow. When somebody says something, whether it's Tom that says something about, you know, us living forever that pisses me off and scares me, there's that moment where I hate him, and then there's that moment of expansion where I stop and consider, wow, what if he's right? And so I think it's a natural part of the process of growing. And when you get that kind of pushback, particularly when somebody engages you intellectually as a hater, what that tells me is they're at step one of changing their own opinion. Now, they might not never come fully to your side, but you've made them stop and consider and react. You've interrupted the autopilot, and that's really cool. Now, I also love when you do things that people agree with and they're inspired by and they are empowered by so that the response is more positive. I certainly prefer that, but I don't necessarily see the haters as negative. I see it motivating. Both great answers. I will award you each 1,000 points. Wow. Yeah. Okay. First points of the game. <laughs> Just made them up right now. All right, next topic. The Matrix. All right, wait, we're giving away a shirt Impact Theory shirt for this one, so be sure to put your answers in the comments and you can win. Tom, we'll of course start with you, because we know this is near and dear to your heart. Yeah, I mean, this movie is, to me, the perfect metaphor for what it means to be a human. So the Matrix is the mind. Uh, you have all these limiting beliefs that either you've adopted yourself or been handed to by society and the people that you love and care about you and all that. Um, and once you can get past those, shuck them off, then you see the way the world really works, and then you can do just a lot more, more than you probably ever thought possible. All right, great. Mel, your response? Um, well, I'm just going to say garbage. Because, um, I like it. Controversy. Uh, you know, I, didn't you say it was a documentary? Well, that's a shirt, yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's what I thought I saw you wearing a shirt that said it, The Matrix yes. was a documentary. Very true. Um, I Honestly, I saw The Matrix so long ago that I can't really remember all that much. And if I had to be told, asked on the spot, what's the difference between the red and the blue pill, I wouldn't know. 
Uh oh. Yes. <laughs> so I might be to say kicked that, off Derek. the set right now. I feel like I need to rewatch the movie the next time I see you, so I can actually talk turkey with you. It it, it is a great movie, but certainly don't mind that. Most people probably don't remember it the way that I do. So we'll have to ho- hold a screening, I think. Yes, and invite all friends and family. That okay. Oh my gosh! You know what? The next time we do a show together, can we do a screening of The Matrix where you see Tom's head in the background of the front row? Wow. You know, like that show where they yes, have that mystery science theater. theater. Yes, do mystery yeah. science theater with that, and you do the commentary. That would be fun. Yeah, let's yes. do that. All right, we have a winner who got the Impact Theory T-shirt, Jessica T. Jessica T. Congratulations, you just won the shirt. Thanks for playing. Next topic. Cat videos, (laughs) motivation, or garbage. Tom is going to say garbage and Mel, motivation. Mel, why are cat videos motivating Um, you? Well, I, I, I just find them really funny. And if you intentionally watch them, as long as you're doing it on purpose, not for procrastination, I just find them motivating because I get a short burst of dopamine. I laugh. It makes me love my cat a little bit more, not going to lie. Uh, I do have a dog too, but um, anyway, I don't know. I think they're kind of fun. All right. A little break, motivating. Tom. <laughs> Cats are like inviting an animal into your house that does not care about your well-being at all. Like, I literally do not understand people that have cats. That is some madness. That like, me. They enough, but what jump. about cat videos? Uh, we can talk cats. That's okay. Cat videos, <clears throat> waste of time, mildly amusing at best. Uh, I literally can't believe that cats have taken over the internet. Like, that's crazy town to me. But, so, yeah. Because right, they're right. more intelligent than dogs. That's why. Is that Because <laughs> I like to think with intelligence comes compassion. And one thing that cats lack is some compassion. There's nothing that's not intelligent. See, dogs are just... I have an Australian Shepherd, too. So, I have a very smart dog. He gives less shits about me than the cat. Wow. Let's put it that way. That, we have a Maine Coon cat, a rescue cat, who I think is so happy that somebody rescued him from the cage that he's not going anywhere. Um, I don't know. I guess I just feel like dogs are happy and lovely and loyal and always there with you. But cats Terrible. have a personality. I got to respect that. I respect the fact that they get angry at you. I respect the fact that they're like, just because I am feline and I am of the animal world does not mean you get to treat me like that. Wow. Yes. That was good. Yes, thank you. I made that up. I like that. All right. Before we go to our next topic, I want to remind everyone that you can win our grand prize by suggesting a topic for our contestants to answer. It's going to be our final category. You can win 25 books off of Tom Bilyeu's reading list, five-second rule signed copy from Mel Robbins, two Impact Theory t-shirts, an Audible subscription. It's huge. Put your comments in now. The most like it, liked comment will win. So let's go to our nice. penultimate category. Wow. Social media. Oh. God, that's a hard one. Mel, your response? Oh, I feel like I'm so wishy-washy on all of these things. That's okay. Well, I'm very conflicted about social media. Okay, well, let's, let's I was start just there. At a, I was just at a party last night for my... We were back in Boston. It was the last game for my daughter's varsity lacrosse game. And we were at a big after-game party after they won at somebody's house. And it was a big potluck with the whole team. And there were literally 30 girls sitting in a circle with their phones out. And... I know the studies. I, and, and in fact, Instagram is the one that causes the greatest depression because it's so curated and there are filters and it's visual. And I am really worried about the consuming side of social media. And even, and I know better and I find myself getting jealous. Like I'll see you guys doing all this cool stuff and these incredible sets and I'm like, shit, you know, Tom is crushing it and I'm, I'm, I'm a loser, I'm behind, I need to get going, I need to, I need to get a game show, I need, to, like, I need to be doing more, 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 right? We all feel it, I don't care how old you are. And so in that regard, I think it's garbage. I think we're gonna look back on this era the way we did with smoking and say, were we crazy to let the cigarette companies advertise to children? Were we crazy? Yes, we were, because it was addictive. And because there was no kind of social conscience, con- like consciousness about it. And so I worry about this tremendously, both for my own mental health and for my kids and the kind of people that they will turn out to be. As a business person, I love the fact that I can connect with people. 
I love the fact that, and as a human being, I love the fact that I can connect with people. I love that people can comment. I love the real-time feedback. I love that we can go live and be connected to people around. Like that is the power of it to do good, to connect, to um, facilitate your dreams, to get you information. It is the single most revolutionary force in the world. I mean, look at, look at the Arab Spring and all the revolutions that happened that were fueled by social media. Look at the way that Manchester, after the bombing at the Ariana Grande concert, immediately social media like uh, just, just got together and they were putting up free housing for people and Facebook has now got the get. So there's pieces to this that are so important for us as a society and as individuals, I'm terrified for all of us. So I don't know what it, the answer is. All right, great answer. There we go, whoops. <laughs> we do have one more category. Right. You're yeah, okay. <laughs> Tom, what's your answer? Um, I, optimism is, is my default setting. So, um, I certainly understand your concerns and I think if I had kids, maybe I would be more concerned. Um, but social media has only given to me. It's never taken anything away. And that's somebody saying mm. that who has people that write him and say, I'm an idiot, I'm a fool, I'm whatever. But like the overwhelming number of people, um, are connecting with each other, helping each other, um, they're able to reach out to people that otherwise they wouldn't be able to. I've been able to connect with people that I never would have been able to. And when I, fe when I think back to how, for lack of a better term, landlocked I felt as a kid, mm. like not knowing how to reach out to somebody, not knowing like how to connect or get out of Tacoma, it was like, I felt so helpless. And now it's, I mean, Wes is here and Wes and I connected on social and there's, Ibrahim, we connected on social. I mean, literally all of our interns are people that we met socially first and they've become real people in my life. And I think that's the one criticism people normally leverage against social media and say, well, they're not real relationships. Well, they are if you pursue them. And so like to me, the, the amount that it's given me is tremendous. And the amount that it's taken away is so infinitesimal as to not be relevant. It's true, like if you think about like what would your life be like if all of a sudden all of that disappeared? The lack of connection. Like the inability to find the information that you need. The, the, the like as you said, like that sense of isolation that so many of us can feel. I agree with you that at the end of the day, the benefits outweigh a million fold. I just get really concerned about our individual psychology and not just for the kids, for the adults. All right, let's go to our last category. Now we have to announce our winner, Leanne on Facebook. Congratulations, you've won the grand prize. Wow, Leanne. Yeah, the top liked comment that you want our contestants to answer and the topic is genius. Sorry, it was a random choice, yes. but we like your topic. Uh-oh. The topic is genius. You're gonna get your- Motivating uh, or garbage. Oh. You, you don't have to get them, you can just respond. All right. All right. Mel. Genius. genius. Is being a genius motivation or garbage? Mm -hmm. I think it's garbage. Because to me, that um, when, when I hear the word genius, I think about somebody that has a particular expertise. And to me, what's really motivating is people that have, and I know Tom, I think, believes the same thing too, have a growth mindset, meaning you're really focused on the effort. So you're not focused on a knowledge bank, you're focused on the effort, the effort, the effort, always trying, always getting better. And to me, genius is sort of a state that you reach on a topic. So I think it's garbage to try to go there, way better to cultivate this ability to keep working harder and harder. All right, great answer. Bless you. Tom? Um, so here's the really bad news. I think that genius is real. And I think that there are some people that are just and I'll define it as the ability to process data very rapidly. And there are some people, they can just process data very, very rapidly. And if you took somebody who was a genius and somebody who wasn't, and they put an equal amount of work and effort and all that, the genius is just gonna win. There's no two ways about it. Um, but having said that, the number of people that qualify for that and then actually do anything with it is so small. And I think people let themselves, <clears throat> certainly I did, I let myself get trapped by that and I felt like, well, I wasn't born a genius at anything. And so that felt like a death sentence for a very long time. And I found myself doing weird emotional contortions to try to be genius at something just so I could feel good about myself. And 
what do you do when it's like you really like run the math? And if you run the math, boys and girls, guess what? You're average, right? That was a hard awakening for me. And so to realize that just mathematically speaking, I was average. And if there was anything that like... You're running the wrong math. Why do you say that? Well, calculate the odds that you're even born. Sure, but you're playing that against all people in the same scenario. So that sort of washes to zero. No, it doesn't. We're a relativistic species. We're looking at how we Depends fit with the people around us. Depends on how you look at it. But you were just saying earlier, even on social media, like you're looking at other people and you feel that steam. But you them. know as well as I do that the power is in here and that based on your ancestry, based on your unique DNA, based on the fact that you have two brains, that's right, two brains from the recent research from the Human Genome Project, they've actually figured out that when you're being formed in an embryonic state, the clump of tissue that separates when your brain is formed, one clump becomes your brain, one clump becomes your gut. Yes, the same DNA that forms your brain forms your gut. In fact, your gut has more unique DNA in it than your brain, than the rest of your entire body. It has the same neurotransmitters that your brain has. So when we talk about body intelligence, there is now crazy amazing science that explains why you feel things before you think them. And so between your situational intelligence, the experience of your life, the unique DNA that you have that is unique to you, you bring this totally unprecedented amount of wisdom to the experience of life. No, there's never going to be another you. Never. And so the secret to life, I believe, is having the clarity to actually hear yourself, to hear that unique wisdom that, that makes you you, and to listen to it, to act on it, to take action on it. Because what makes Tom tick is different than what makes me tick. And you could measure us based on money or based on how many people work for us or how long we've been married or how, what our grades are, all this artificial bullshit. The thing that truly matters, the people that you admire most, they all have one thing in common. They've all figured out how to listen to their own wisdom. You think Jay-Z holds a caucus before he makes a business decision? I don't think so. Neither does Oprah Winfrey or Bill Gates or Richard Branson or any of these people that you hold in high regard as you should or whether it's a poet or a writer or whomever you love and adore, they have one characteristic in common. They've figured out who they are by listening to their instincts and taking action on it. And so can you, that's the answer. Passion and, and living an engaged life and, and figuring out what you're supposed to do, it starts in here, not out there. Word. I'll give you a slightly different take. Uh, there's nothing special about you. You are average in every way conceivable, and your life is going to be the answer to one question. What are you willing to become, and what price are you willing to pay to get there? That's it. You are a blank canvas, my friends, and you can become anything you want, but that dual brain that she's talking about, every fucking buddy has it. Everyone but you love, the same one. everyone you hate, they all start with the same boring lump of flesh spread out, yes, from their head down to their gut, how wonderful. But now it's gonna become a question, if you wanna be a snowflake, snowflake, then you better start synthesizing a lot of fucking information, read a lot of stuff, watch a lot of things, experience a lot, and then have the guts to have an individual reaction. But to think that you were born special is a mistake. Is that clear? Not to me. I think that, that, I, I think that is the biggest hunk of horse shit I've ever heard Would in my entire life. Yes, that was not, that was garbage. You have something unique and amazing to offer to the world that nobody else can do. It is your job. The purpose of your life is to figure out who you are. And the way that you do that is you tune out. You tune out the world and you tune in here. Yeah, you gotta go read. You gotta go read. You gotta watch a ton of videos. You gotta tune into this show every week. You've gotta explore. You've gotta experience. You gotta fail. But then you've always gotta calibrate it against what are your instincts saying? What energizes you? What depletes you? That's, it's really that simple. Follow the things that energize you. Follow the things that you're naturally curious about. Don't buy into the shit he's telling you because you are, you are not only unique. I think it, you're a bloody miracle, the fact that you were born who you were born. And there's a reason why you're here and it's time you start to figure it out. You build yourself <laughs> brick by brick. 
like anybody. And if you want to be special, you must become special. That's the joy of life, is to decide who you want to become and become that person. Doesn't matter where you start, doesn't matter who you were born to, doesn't matter what your DNA is, nothing. You can become anyone you want to become. So I have no doubt that you can become special. I have no doubt that you can do amazing things that other people simply believe are not possible. But it's a choice and it's based on your actions and what you do and your willingness to suffer and grow and fail and learn from it and get back up and claw your way to the top. But it's in your control. So the current state of your life is all your fault, whether that's good or bad, but you can become anything you want. Just have to set your mind to it. And with that, we're going to have to yeah, wrap buddy. it up. Because I won. Join us for another bonus round where it's a battle royale. <laughs> oh. But thank you to Mel Robbins and Tom Bilyeu. <laughs> thank you guys for joining us. For our that first amazing. ever. Our first ever game show on the set of Impact Theory Studios. Uh, thanks to our live audience for joining us <laughs> and for participating and playing along. Be sure to follow Mel Robbins and Tom Bilyeu online. Subscribe to all the great content. Um, and don't miss a very special event coming to you in just a few hours from the studio. Mel is going to be doing a live cast with Success Magazine, showing you how to build the life of your design and use the tools of confidence, courage, and clarity to make it happen. Tune in at 5 p.m. Pacific Daylight Time. Go to success.com forward slash impact. Okay. Thanks, everyone. Peace.